Hello everyone, my guest today is Aki Bolog. He's a software engineer and a VC associate at OpenView Venture Partners, along with director of sales and marketing at Infinity DB, co-founder and CEO currently at Market Muse. Aki, are you ready to take us to the top? Uh, yes, absolutely. It's a pleasure to be here. You bet. So is Market Muse your sole focus right now, or are you still dabbling in sales and marketing and VC stuff at OpenView? Yeah, so um, I actually, I was a VC associate at OpenView a few years ago, Technically, now I'm a venture partner with Wolfram Ventures, where they we look at basically AI investments. But Market Muse is my sole focus. So venture for me is kind of a nights and weekends hobby. Uh, but uh, but at, at Market Muse, I'm a, a, the original founder. I'm now a co-founder and CEO. Um, I run the, the 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 our sales strategy for the most part, um, fundraising and and so on. So it, it it consumes my time for sure. But you know, on the weekend, who doesn't like looking at venture deals? And tell us what Market Muse does and what's the revenue model. Is it a pure play SaaS uh, option or what? Um, yes, it's actually somewhat of a hybrid. So what we do is we use AI to accelerate content creation. So uh, given a, a particular topic, we download massive amounts of, of web content on that topic, crunch it, and build a, a content blueprint that shows you exactly how to write to cover a topic comprehensively. And we're also now soon rolling out with a content planning solution that looks at your entire site and can identify where you have blind spots in your content or thin content or content gaps and basically prioritize those suggestions to drive your content planning as well. So essentially what we do is we use uh, we we are building an AI kind of research assistant for all of your content planning and, and, and creation. And when was launch date? Yeah, so we we launched our first product two years ago. Um, that was a page level content optimization product called Content Analyzer, which is a SaaS product that's five hundred a month, uh, you know, for a seat to start, and and it, it doubles or triples the output of your of each writer. That's still around writer. today, or it's it it's, transitioned. Yep. Still around today, so you can use that at marketmuse.com. And you know, if you have if you have a writer, you're you know spending two grand or twenty five hundred a month on, you can double their their output with this this simple software tool. So so that's where we started, um, and and then we launched a second product, which are the content brief products, where basically, given a particular topic you want to build authority for online, we can show you exactly how to dominate that. Uh, that topic. What are the subtopics you should mention? When so, I'll give you an example. So, um, you know, let's say, just com kind of completely randomly, let's say you want to write about dog food and you want to be known as the dog food authority on the web. Well, what you want to think about is what are all the subtopics you should cover. So, what are the different types of dog food? You know, what are the different characters or characteristics of dog food? For example, maybe there's high fiber dog food for for elderly dogs. And, and so on. And so you'll want to cover all of these topics in your content. Today, the way that content planning happens is you're basically just using your existing knowledge of dog food and kind of put it together. Maybe you're Googling it, reading the Wikipedia article on dog food. You're trying to piece this article together. We just go to the web, we download 10,000 content items on dog food, crunch it, and use this machine learning engine to, to build a relevance-based, what we call a knowledge graph that shows you exactly, here are the things you would want to cover to be an expert, to write as if an expert were writing about dog food. Here are the questions you'd want to address, you know, Got it. what what types are there, et cetera. So you launched it in 2013. What have you scaled to today in terms of total customers? Oh, yes. We're uh, well above 100 customers, uh, most of them um, larger kind of enterprise or, or, or even mid-sized or enterprise publishing entities. So companies that have, you know, massive, uh, you know, content uh, driven strategies, both in terms of, you know, driving their customer acquisition through organic search, as well as using content to build authority. So we have over, over 100 customers um, now we've we've actually just today received the first uh, venture funding that just hit the bank about an hour ago, uh, and we'll be using that to expand further into the enterprise with with really Fortune 500 content uh, uh, creators as as well, where they have hundreds or thousands of content you know people in, in so a given. So let's like talk about funding in a second, but just so I under, and understand the general size of these customers. I mean, what are they paying you per month on average? Would you say like 500 a grand, 10 grand, you know, 10,000? Yeah, so so you start at five hundred a month with with our our SaaS 
tool, that's a really kind of easy way you can kind of kick the tires and get to know it. And and it really scales up to our largest deal right now is, is over a million for the year. Okay. And so what would you say an average is? Is like is 10 grand a month a good average or? Uh, five grand a month is, 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 is a good average for. Okay. You know. okay. Now, do you have like, do your top three customers make up like more than 30% of your revenue? Do you have kind of imbalance like that? Um, yeah. So when I was in finance prior to uh, three careers ago, um, I was, I was a software de- developer, then did stuff in AI and decision support system design, then went to finance for a little bit. When I was in finance, we, we wanted to avoid revenue concentration, but we do have uh, three major clients that make up or five major clients for us to make up a third, more than no, 50% of our revenue. And the reason for that is companies that have large content teams, our solution scales. So every individual content strategist or writer you have can get a two, three X boost from using our software. So if you have a thousand writers, you know, in your company or, or at the agency where you, where you work, you know, we can, we can, um, uh, you know, we can accelerate all of them and get, you know, you know, 2000 X lift on, on, you know, uh, you know, multiplying by the large numbers. So, so it does kind of end up skewing toward larger customers in that okay. sense. And generally speaking with a hundred customers and a five grand ARPU, I mean, you guys are north of 500 grand per month right now on revenue. Is that generally accurate? Um, that's not quite there yet, but we'll be there. Well, we'll be there shortly. You think you'll hit that in Q, you know, Q1 or Q2 this year? Uh, I would, yeah, I would say, you know, depending on how these deals go. Yeah. The, the, the deals have, um, yeah. So, so we're launching, yeah, Q2, maybe conservative Q3. Okay. Um, um, uh, you know, we're, we're basically launching a platform. So the one challenge that we've had is basically we have these, you know, smaller clients that are very valuable, but they're using the, you know, entry level software. And then we have the larger enterprise clients where we have a lot of kind of, you know, manual, um, you know, almost a managed high service touch. like, it's very high touch. So we're in Q2, Q2 ish, uh, we're launching a platform that will basically bring t- this together and give everybody the ability to analyze their site, build a content plan, you know, really do all the kind of best practices for, for content. Got strategy. It. So what's a more accurate number for where you're at today? Like 400 grand or something like that? Yeah. Yeah. It's a, it's about, yeah, it's a, yeah, closer to that. About 400. Okay. Give me a general sense of growth. So take me back 13 months in December of 2016. What were you guys at about? Yeah. So d- December of 2016. So we had, we had just come to market, um, in, um, in late 2015 and it was very much managed services. Um, in 2016, um, we were closer to 35 K MRR. So about 300 and change, but closer to 400 K ARR. Got it. So you were about 35 K in AR at the end of December, sorry, in a monthly recurring revenue at the end of December. So about 13 months ago, December, 2016 today, you're over 400,000 a month in revenue. Is that accurate? Um, yeah, we're, we're getting, yeah, we're getting there. We're getting okay. close to that. Yeah. Okay. Uh, with, yep. We'll say yep. between three fifty and four. Is that fair? Yeah. Yeah. I, I think, I think that's around the range. I mean, it, it, what, what we're doing, we basically, well, wait, Stefan, counting, that's like a number that, you know, uh, I'm trying to just understand your growth rate. I mean, wh- I mean, or is it like, yep. th- or is it as low as 200 or 300 or 400 or 500? I mean, generally where are you guys at? Yeah. Yeah. So it's, it's, it's in that range. I mean, I, I don't want to get too specific because I'm also, including bookings on, on some of the larger deals that are closing now. Um, but, um, well, yeah, you just divide that by 12 in terms of getting MRR, right. Or however right. long the contract value is. Exactly. Okay. Exactly. All right. But generally speaking, I mean, we can say almost, I mean, 10 X, right. 35 K up to about 350 K. Yeah. I think that's about okay. right. So it, that explains why you've raised, obviously been able to raise capital. So you just closed some today, hit the bank account. How much total have you raised? Yeah. So we're raising three in this round. How much total have you raised altogether? Oh, I'm sorry, in four in total. Yeah. Got it. Now you said that as if it hasn't actually closed yet. Are you still raising? Is it an open round? You're going to let it roll? Yeah, it's an open round for about two more weeks. Uh, so we have uh, we just did the first close today, and then we have um, a couple of um, a couple of VC funds we're still talking to to round out the rest. And um, and uh, yeah, so I, I imagine in the next two three weeks we'll have the the remaining million. How much did you? Okay, I was going to say. So you closed two million of the three million already. 
Yeah. Got it. Um, good stuff. Okay. And what about some of the other economics around the company? What's your churn look like today? Yeah. So churn was, um, <laughs> um, churn was, um, about 11% last year. Um, and in logo terms churn of, or revenue churn, uh, in terms of, of logo churn, actually in terms of revenue churn, but we, you know, we really had, um, it was, it was roughly similar. Basically the companies that churn were, you know, we didn't have multiple deals at churn. So it was, it was roughly the same, but calculating revenue wise, um, um, it was revenue, revenue churn of, um, around 11%. Um, and then there were some additional companies that, um, we had we should not have taken them on as clients. So they churned out pretty quickly. It's a bit of a toss up internally, whether we categorize, categorize those as failed POCs or just or, or regular churn. But if you include that, it's, it's in the upper teens of churn last year. Annually. Uh, annually, over Got the it. year. And fully weighted, what are you spending to acquire these customers? Yeah, so we use content uh, and data journalism to really drive our, our customer acquisition. So um, we, we're spending about um, nine grand um, in, in acquiring a customer. Yep. And so if, if they're paying you, call it, you know, well, you know, if they're paying you, call it five grand a month, you're getting that back in about two months. Is that accurate payback period wise? Yes, that that is definitely the. I mean, as we scale now with the new hiring, the CAC is going to go, the customer acquisition cost is going to go up. But but yeah, typically we've got a pretty pretty quick payback. Where are you spending that money? Like besides right. besides the salaries of your content people? You know, it really is. It really is eighty percent of our our expenditures are salary based. Um, I mean, we have not only sales, of course. You know, putting content out is great, but then you still have to, you know, work them through an inside sales process. Um, there has to be account management and and customer success. So one thing that we take very seriously is that every company that comes in goes through a very structured customer success program to make sure that they understand how to use the software, what are all the features. Because what we're doing in terms of building content strategies is sort of non-trivial. It's not just you know, it's not just you push a button and you get a, a, a result. You really have to think about the how you're using it. What is the particular context of this client? Are they you know, do they have authority? Do do they not? Do they have a lot of content? Do they not? Are they in competitor space or they're not so a lot of that is we've made a sizable investment in customer success mm -hmm. what quantify that in terms of your team size today yeah so we have four people in customer success and another three people in professional services and Although total team size is what uh total team size is about 22 now okay so seven out of 22 focused on some form of customer success or onboarding correct got it now before you raise your last round were you cash flow positive or no no, no, we, um, we've always been burning just a little bit. So we've typically been burning about 50 K a month. Okay. And, and are you planning to change that drastically with this round closing or you think you'll keep burning about 50 K a month? I think we'll, I don't think we'll change it drastically. Although we do want to invest, we want to use some of the leverage of this new money to invest into enterprise uh, deals uh, a bit earlier than, you know, be a, being aggressive on some of those and they have longer sales cycles and so on. But, um, but we really don't want to, we want to go from, you know, this kind of definition of default dead to default alive, you know, and, and so we really want to, um, build something where even if we cannot raise any more capital, you know, we'll be around. Yep. What is the, uh, in terms of economics of lifetime value right now, what do you assume lifetime value is of these customers? That's a really good question. Um, I, um, I've made some conjectures we've, well, with, with, you know, with, a even with a, you know, 15%, let's call it 15% churn rate, um, uh, from, from last year on average, you know, the, the lifetime, what is that about eight months yep. there? But, um, but I, I, you know, if you, if you, if we, if, if we tighten up our, our focus on deals, uh, on on the the deals that were the right type of deals ha have churned very very rarely because what we do in accelerating people you just could not do any other way you can only do it manually yeah no Stephen so, I get that so it becomes very easy to lie to yourself about lifetime value because you could assume they stay with you infinite infinite like infinitely right right so I've used like eight nine months to calculate LTV but in reality you know at at scale it, or or even with 
just with building out sort of the capabilities that we're building out this year, it'll be probably more like two, three years, maybe Wait, five where, to five. Where are time. you getting eight months from? Because if you did 12% churn annually, that's 1% per month. So if I divide one divided by 0. 0.001, that puts you at like almost 100 months times five grand a month. That puts you at a 500 grand LTV. Where are you getting eight months from? No, no. If, if you, if you, if you churn, Oh, I see. I see. I did the division wrong. Yeah. yeah you missed so a zero. I missed, <laughs> I missed a zero. Right. Yeah. So I don't really look at LTV. Um, yeah. you know, I, I, it, we, we went to I could tell him like, okay, this guy is making this up as he goes because he got the division wrong. So do I call him out on it or is it just not something he focuses no, you, on? It's just not, it's just, yeah. it's just not something you at, focus on. Yeah. yeah. The LT, you know, lifetime value in the first two years of sales is to me irrelevant. So I, I don't look at it. Um, yeah. I don't look at it. Yeah, that I, makes good sense. Now, where are you guys uh, in, in terms of the team? Where are you guys all based? Yeah, so mostly in Boston. Um, now I'm building a team in New York, and we're building another team in Montreal, uh, a development team. But most of the team is in Boston. Okay, good stuff. And uh, let's wrap up here, Stefan, with the famous five. Number one, what is your favorite business book? Uh, yes. What I wish I learned knew when I was 20, by the way, why don't you, why don't you just correct me? I just called you my last guest, Stefan. You're, you're Aki, not Stefan. So sorry, Aki, what is your favorite business I've been, book? I've been called many things. <laughs> uh, what I wish I knew when I was 20 by Tina Sealing. Okay, good. What I wish I knew when I was 20. Number two, is there a CEO you're following or studying right now? Uh, gosh, that's a really good one. Um, I, you know, I, I don't, uh, I don't, but I do follow investors, uh, and I do study investors pretty closely. Number three, besides your own, what's your favorite online tool? Uh, favorite online tool. We, we really love zoom actually, uh, for, for video conferencing. We just had those guys on a uh, CEO a couple episodes ago. It's incredible. I mean, they're well over hundred million bucks in ARR and their acquisition yes. strategy is impressive to study. Number yes. four, Aki, uh, how many hours of sleep do you get every night? Uh, about six depends on how much terror there is, but about <laughs> six. All right. And what's your situation? Married, single, you have kids, single, single, no kids. No kids. All right. And how old are you? Uh, 32, 32. Last question. Take us back 12 years. What do you wish you knew when you were 20? <laughs> yes. Um, I would have taken, taken more risk. I mean, I, I took a fair amount, uh, I thought, but I would have, uh, I would have, I would have done more. You know, you, when, when you, when you do something hard and you don't die, you realize you could have done something harder. There you guys have it. CEO of market muse founded the company, uh, back in 2013. He says, he says he wished he would have doubled down, taken a little bit more risk, but doing pretty good for himself. Launched his company again back in 2013, helping folks scale their content strategy with AI. Uh, in December of 2016, they were doing about 35 grand a month in revenue. They've scaled that almost 10X to about 350 grand in monthly recurring revenue. Uh, in terms of capital raise, they raised 4 million bucks, serving 100 customers that pay about five grand per month. Churn is really low, less than 1% per month in terms of logo and revenue. They're about the same with their team of 22 up in Boston, New York, and soon to be Montreal. Aki, thank you for taking us to the top. Thanks for your time.